this is this is uh, the story that actually got me uh, hired in Chicago. Um, so it's, I've told it a million times. I'm kind of sick of it, but people seem to like it. And uh, uh, and I was a freelancer for the longest time. And when this actually happened, you'll see it, it, it became a huge uh, uh, ruckus in Chicago. I'll explain a little more after the, the story. But anyway, um, I admit I'll pretty much do anything for money. And make no mistake, it was all about the money. Two hundred fifty dollars a day. The price for five hours of humiliation, it seemed like a fair deal. The assignment was simple. Find out what it was like to be an actor trapped in a humiliating costume. Like the gorilla man who handed out flyers for Gold's Gym, or the people who swelter inside giant Mickey Mouse outfits at Disneyland. For me, the challenge was, for four days, to play Cheezosaurus Rex, the cheese-colored cartoon dinosaur used to foist Kraft macaroni and cheese on America's children, and pocket the equivalent of two weeks of my normal pay. In the entertainment business, this is known as suit work. The option of last resort for aspiring actors and out-of-luck comics such as myself. Just step in a costume, act like a goof, and deposit the dirty little check. By accepting my talent agency's mission to play the purveyor of cheese-flavored powder and pasta, I agreed to operate under orders straight out of a spy caper. I would arrive at a neutral location in Chicago, climb into a rental cargo van driven by a Kraft Public Relations intern, secretly don the dinosaur suit while riding to the morning commuter rush at Chicago's Union Station, inflate the outfit, and march out to confuse and disarm the masses. Standing in the chilly pre-dawn air, I look forward to the challenge as the van pulls up. When, within 15 minutes, everything has already gone horribly wrong. The Cheezosaurus is a horrible, complex beast, rife with metal poles, battery packs, and timed fans, which ostensibly both inflate the suit and keep the actor inside from sweating to death. The outfit also comes with an instructional video for assembly that the two women from Kraft, the intern and an accompanying account rep, have conveniently forgotten to watch. <laughs> Fearing that improper assembly of the suit could lead to a bizarre and undignified death, we turn the van around and head to the account rep's apartment to fire up the VCR. There, following along as the video's incredibly bad actors pretend that donning the dino suit is simple, I alternately laugh at my reflection in the mirror and wince from the crushing burden on my back. Finally, we force the dinosaur's head on and manage to zipper me up. I knock two wires together, wait for the fans to switch on, and warn all women and children to flee the vicinity. When fully inflated, the Chisosaurus tops out at seven feet tall and three feet wide, with a tail the size of Toledo. My craft companions can't stop laughing. A half hour later, we sneak down the back staircase and hustle to the van as commuters whiz past on Chicago Avenue. Just one problem. How to cram a seven-foot fully inflated plastic flotation device with a tail into the cargo van. I curl into the fetal position and soon find myself sliding across the floor each time we stop, start, or turn. Tumbling around like a sack of potatoes amid the suit's ample belly area. At this point, the crafted women are laughing so hard they've begun to cry. If I could only get my arms free, I would unzip the suit and flee. Now, I, Cheezosaurus, have been lumbering through the streets of Chicago for a full half hour peering out of a mesh-covered hole in my cheese-loving chest. My arms have already sustained ligament damage from the endless waving, while the Kraft intern hands out flyers inviting passers-by to bring their children to a Kraft macaroni and cheese anniversary party, Saturday at nearby Navy Pier. Youngsters scream with excitement from the windows of passing school buses. Drivers honk in amusement, and a carload of young men sharing a readily visible bong seem downright confused by the sight of me. <laughs> Back at the van for a two-hour break, the suit is unzipped to the disgusted squeals of the craft intern. The fan's batteries ran out ten minutes earlier. The result is a grotesque, shriveled, plastic skin with feet that feel like sandbags and the eternal temperature of a blast furnace. Lesson one learned, keep an eye on the time. Each battery lasts only 90 minutes. Three and a half days to go. I consoled myself by realizing that Brad Pitt wore a chicken suit. As I arrive during an obscenely cold morning on the second day to again strap on my tools of ignorance, I remind myself that even one of Hollywood's top dogs suffered the indignity of suit work before hitting it big on Thelma and Louise. It's a comforting thought. And having managed the timing of the fans the previous day, I managed to make it through the morning. I managed to make it through the morning. The week's greatest danger, however, appears as I trudge back to the van for my break. We are spotted by a field tripping group of Chicago public high school students. <laughs> I beg my craft partner to travel another route back to the van. She assures me I will be fine. Besides, meeting and greeting is what the job is all about. Having been raised as a good Catholic to offer up the little pains life gives us, and thinking of the suffering Jesus endured carrying his cross, I trudge toward my own modern-day Golgotha. <laughs> hey, it's Barney's retarded brother, yells one witty lad, right before he plants an elbow in my sternum. 
Let's see if we can find the guy's face, hollers another. As about 20 hooligans proceed to poke and prod every apparent orifice on my shiny plastic outfit. By the time the craft intern realizes I'm getting the cheese kicked out of me, it's too late to escape. To make matters worse, since the Cheezosaurus suit sports only four fingers on each hand, I can't even flip them the bird. <laughs> the suit's creators must have known that a middle finger would surely be used to provoke lawsuits. When I try to turn and waddle away, a warden-like teacher demands a group photo. In the name of Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, I am compelled to stop. Somewhere out there exists photographic evidence of this brutal group assault. Fearing more trouble, I study a Kraft memo that I've been handed entitled, Answers to the Tough Questions. For instance, to the query, how can you promote a product that has so much fat and so little nutrition, the seven-foot plastic beast keeper is to reply, I am not a nutrition expert, but I would be happy to put you in touch with one. I can tell you that I grew up eating Kraft macaroni and cheese, and I feel good knowing that my children will enjoy it, enjoy it as part of their balanced diet, too. Most other confrontational queries were to be brushed aside with the claim that no one else has complained yet. I shudder. My morning as Cheezosaurus was more of the same. Waving, hugs, taunts, sneers, and countless photos with foreigners. During lunch hour, hour, however, I'm asked to work the sidewalk in front of the Equitable Building on Michigan Avenue, the building in which I work my normal day job, where my only costume is a tie. Imagine the slow-boiling rage of doing something incredibly stupid and then having your respected co-workers mock you for sport. Granted, none of them knows that the poor fool in the suit is actually good-natured old Carl, but for 90 minutes, I watch through my stomach spot eye hole as dozens of office mates walk by and hurl scorn. You couldn't pay me enough to do that, is the most common abuse. Finally, I understand the destructive effects of prejudice firsthand. I am being judged not only by the color of my mottled orange skin, but by the grotesque size of my character. <laughs> Saturday morning's party, a.k.a. my final day in hell, can't come fast enough. The Navy Pier's garish crystal garden is a marketing fink's wet dream. Hundreds of aspiring child actors swarm the floor, amid an enormous birthday cake and a gigantic wooden birthday card honoring the anniversary. There are three gigantic wooden mock-ups of mac and cheese boxes with holes in the center for kids to stick their mugs. Polaroids of the tots will be added to a nationwide search for 12 perfect little faces to adorn special anniversary box fronts. Next to the boxes is a small stage upon which I will endure my greatest humiliation yet. Leading children in a line dance called the Cheezosaurus Shuffle. <laughs> I gaze out at this surreal scene from my secret dressing room. Actually, the freezer of a nearby restaurant. <laughs> Finally, the host calls for us to emerge through the crowd and take my rightful place on stage. As I waddle my way through the throng, the smug DJ begins playing Stuck in the Middle with You. <laughs> yes, the song from the infamous police torture scene in Reservoir Dogs. At this moment, I think I would prefer being tied to a chair looking at my sliced off ear. Suddenly, I can't even move. Like Gandhi, Elvis, or Pope John Paul II, I am swarmed on stage by children who want nothing more than to touch Cheezosaurus, hug Cheezosaurus, and tell Cheezosaurus how much they love him. It's creepy. <laughs> Countless tiny hands grope, grope my dino butt and crotch, leading the crowd through the shuffle, hoping to God that I don't sideswipe a kid with my dino tail. I pray for the agony to end. After the show, as I watch children grab box after box of macaroni from the display tables on their way out, I take stock of the many lessons I learned this week. One, it's not a good idea to sneeze, cough, or flatulate while encased in a suit you cannot unzip. <laughs> Two, small children will, un will continuously hug anyone in a plastic suit. And three, Brad Pitt might not be as much of a wuss as I was always thought he was. In the months since she's a source, I've devoted myself to recovering the deflated sense of dignity and self-respect that comes with an inflated bank account. The photos of my time in the suit haunt me. I've held on to them under the principle that, as Santayana taught, if we fail to remember our past, we're condemned to repeat it. <laughs> and I want not only to protect myself from the torture of suit work, but to also protect my future children and my future children's children. Thank you.